see on your screen, okay? So, okay, can you see me now? Okay, I'm delighted that you have all come to the introductory oil painting class at Zisang Paint at Elephant Painting um, class. Welcome again. I don't know if you have any prior knowledge of oil painting, but you must have seen oil painting paintings before in books, films, and exhibitions, right? Hi, hello. Oil painting is marvelous, and it can depict everything on earth. Um, that's why I think all the students who come to the class to learn oil painting have high level of aesthetics. I will give you an initial understanding of oil painting through this class. Okay, so welcome again, welcome to Elephant Oil Painting class and this is the, the class of introduction to oil painting. I'm the lecturer, uh, Li Danxue, and you, you can call me by my English name, Christiana. Okay, so before leading to leading you to the oil paintings, I would like to get to know. Uh, I would like you to get to know me a little. Then I will give you a short introduction of myself. First, I'm a teacher at the uh, Jisang Painting and Calligraphy Academy. My name is Li Danxu, and of course, you can call me by my English name, Christiana. And I have been painting for fifteen years old since I was a child. And my get undergraduate alma mater is Beijing Normal uh, University, and I have been working as an art education since I graduated. I'm different from other oil painting teachers in that I study both oil painting and Chinese painting. So I'm proficient in both Chinese painting and oil painting. Therefore, when I teach, students who know me well will know that I often use oil painting as example in my Chinese painting class and I often use Chinese painting as an extension and comparison in my oil painting classes, which is one of the characteristics of my classes. So that you, if you are interested in painting, if you have any question about painting, if you need to talk to me, please feel free to come along. Okay, I'm now the, besides, I'm now the Vice President of Jisang Painting and Calligraphy Academy, academically responsible for oil painting courses. On the right, you can see are some of my works which belong to the classical realistic school of painting. And later in the course, I will tell you about the various schools of oil painting for those um, who are zero foundation. Of course, so... For these five days, I will guide you through learning and understanding of oil painting. So for the next five days, I have planned for you here, like this. Can you see this picture on the screen? Can you see my slide moving? Okay, I believe you already know something about me so that I will also like to um, get to know something about you. I don't know if you have exposed to painting or, or fine arts from various sources before. Do you have any knowledge or your own opinion about oil painting? Okay, if you already have basic knowledge of oil painting, then please go to the chat box and type the number one. And if you have no basic knowledge and have not been exposed to oil painting, please go to the chat box and type the number zero, okay, to let me know that. You're okay, no, you don't have any basic knowledge of oil painting. Okay, I need to get to know you so that I can tailor my lessons to your level so that you can better absorb what I'm going to say in my class. Okay, no matter what your foundation is, only if you come to my class, I will take you from 0 or 1 to 10. Okay, I can see that most of you have no basic foundation of oil painting. That's okay, no matter what, funda what your foundation is, only if you come to the class, I will take you from 0 to 10. 
Okay, I will make it easy for you all to know and understand oil painting. I will give you a taste of how different styles of oil painting are painted. How do you paint a beautiful seascape? How do you paint some realistic flowers? So for the next five days, we are going on an amazing painting journey. Together, we will explore the mystery of oil painting, okay? So, um, many students have asked me before, Christina, now, where are you giving us lessons? In fact, let's see together. In fact, I'm now giving classes at Beijing Teaching and Research Headquarters of our academy. In addition, we have branches in Wuhan, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. Our academy is well known in China, of course, but for those of you from North America, you may not know us. So, I would like to briefly introduce our academy, you know, our academy or company for you. Since you come for the oil painting class, right? It's important to understand um, what kind of company we are, so that you can learn oil painting here. Okay, right? And uh, next, you're going to see this. First of all, our company is the one and the only calligraphy and painting academy and uh, the listed education group. What does this title mean? It means that our company has a strong system of teaching and professional teachers. So second, we have teaching and research team made up of teachers from Tsinghua University, academic for, of art and design, and also me from Beijing Normal University. So third, because we have a very strong team of teachers, we have developed a series of Jixiang method of painting. And in the next five days, you will learn what the Jixiang method of painting is. In short, all students, even those with zero foundation, will be able to understand and learn how to paint the paintings we teach. I'm going to teach you. So all the students will be able to follow me, and this is our teaching philosophy. Uh, actually, five days is a very short time, but I will give you everything I want to say without any reservation. Of course, I'm not just going to teach you this time. I've made some preparations, and I've got a gift for all of you who come to our live studio. That is, I'm going to show you there's five collections of exclusive materials, which are the five exclusive collections of study materials. And um, these five materials was indeed an easy to collect. And this is an internal collection of colonial material that we have accumulated over so many years of teaching. And all the students come to the class today will have the opportunity to receive one of these collections. Okay, so what do these collections include? Let's see together. This is the first one. First of all, today I will give you this. The world's famous paintings. We mentioning oil painting, you would all think of the Mona Lisa, don't you? I don't believe there is someone in the class who has not seen this work before, right? But if you want to see the Mona Lisa, where do you have to go? Where do we need to go? Tell me. You, you need to go to the Louvre in the France, right? You have to buy a ticket, make an appointment and quit. And as soon as you enter the gallery, what are you going to see, right? You are going to see the thing like this, right? The crowds. You can only hold up your phone to get a blurry picture and with the recent international situation being so unstable, it's better for safety reasons that you don't go. So today I found the Mona Lisa for you in high definition and put it in the packet. Like this. I've put um, some very famous world paintings in this collection. And you can zoom in these famous paintings on your phone and you will see a lot of details in study how these very great paintings was painted. Uh, you can see there are some of the textures of oil painting on the surface. There are also works by Van Gogh and Picasso here. 
So next, what what else we're going to get? I have prepared a great gift pack of world landscape oil paintings for you. And we all know that there are different subjects in oil painting, such as landscapes, flowers, and other things such as people and animals. The landscape of our uh, oil painting is a very um, important subject. So today I have put together a um, set of landscape oil paintings for you. And you can use it as a mobile phone wallpaper, computer wallpaper, or simply enjoy the beautiful oil painting scenery by yourself. And um, what next? What's next? What else? And the collection of oil paintings of flowers for tracing. Right? See this collection. Many students like to paint flowers, so I have put some of the beautiful samples we have accumulated over the years of teaching. And some of the, uh, of the works are suitable for you to create. Um, if you have the oil painting materials, you can paint and draw it with it as you like. Um, actually, you cannot find most of these on the internet. They are not available. Or um, if you can find some of it, uh, some of them, you're going to find that they are not um, the paintings of uh, high definition. But all these pictures, all these landscape oil painting we have uh, collected for you are all high definition version. Okay, and uh, what else you're going to get? If you have small children at home and do you, have, uh, you don't have time for them, well, there are a lot of painting tasks set by the school. I don't know whether the parents in North America have this kind of concerns. Then, well, in China, um, the parents really have their concerns, their worries about this, like this. So then, well, we do not have time to, te to teach them. When we do not have time to teach them, then you are going to get this. Uh, is tracing cheating? I know your, your meaning, you mean the plagiarism, right? We have the pl plagiarism. But when we start learning something, we start from um, imitating, from tracing. cannot play video. You mean that the video of the class, if you have any problem of that, if you have any problem with uh, entering this class or with the video, you can go to our teaching assistant for help. Okay? Because I don't, I'm not very clear about the system. Okay, so um, if you have some st small children at home and uh, um, this gift, I'm going to prepare it for everyone. Okay, with a bunch of painting material inside, there are, for example, creative art, cartoons, and line drawings, which are brought to you as a gift for children. Okay, and uh, what else? The last collection. I know that there are some students who want to learn to paint and I have prepared a collection of basic sketches for you. Uh, we all know that sketching actually um, is the foundation when it comes to oil painting and once you have this package, you will be able to see what sketch is. So we have taken a lot of pictures of still life for you and each set of pictures need to be lit angled and selected. In addition, I need to paint the pieces involved in this collection. So, that's it. So, um, these are some gifts for you here and it really takes me a lot to get all of these and I'm going to give these to you. So, how much are this? How can you get it? Actually, this collection are not for sale today. Why? Because every single copy of this gift pack is collected by all teachers and staff of our academy. And we can't account for how much we can sell it. So we use these collections only in encouraging those who are willing to listen to the lessons, willing to learn and willing to appreciate the oil paintings. 
and we will send them to everyone for free after. But it's not like we are giving them a way just for coming in because we've had a lot of classes and a lot of students are getting them. We have already found someone was selling these collections on other platforms after he has got the packages from us. So we will take some measures against it. Okay, I'm going to... Okay, I'll tell you how to get it. It's quite easy. First of all, you need to listen to the lecture very carefully. For the next five days, I will send you one of them each day as long as you listen carefully to the lectures from the beginning to the end of the class without leaving. Am I clear? And second, we will teach you to draw or to copy a Chinese, uh, or an oil painting masterpiece in each class. But please remember, if you do not have the tools or equipment of oil painting, no worries, just take a pen or pencil and find a piece of paper, any paper you have. Then follow me and draw on your paper what I have drawn on my paper, and you can get the collection, the gift I prepared for you. Only if you draw something, no matter how simple it is, even a sketch is okay. Am I clear? Yes, if you want, you can make a screenshot of this slide. Because uh, every time at the end of a class, many students go to ask for me, how can I get the gift? How can I get the free things? Okay, but at the end of class, I'm going to show you again this slide. Okay, I'm going to show you again how to do to get the premium or how to get the collection. Okay, now please tell me in the chat box, can you do it? Do you want it? Yes? Okay. Um, so, in addition to the gift, in this lesson, I'm going to take you through the process of painting this very beautiful seascape. Is it beautiful? The sea, the sea, the mountain, and uh, the sea, the snowy mountain, the sky, and also the sakura. In this lesson, apart from teaching you to paint this picture, I will teach you about oil painting. And each of our five lessons will have a different focus. In the first session, I will take you through the tools of oil painting. I won't be teaching you anything in depth about oil painting because you don't have a concept or uh, you don't have an overall concept of oil painting yet. You need to at least understand what oil painting is and why it is called oil painting. Right? So this question, I'm going to give it to you. Why is it not called water painting? It's called oil painting, right? So my question is, why is it not called water painting, but oil painting? Can you send the picture by the WhatsApp? Yes, I believe that uh, our teaching assistant is uh, contacting you with WhatsApp. But what what is um, W A T? I I just comprehend it as WhatsApp, but I don't know if it's a new social media that I don't know. Okay, so let's continue with our class, and I'm going to give you what are you going. To, what are you going to need in our class? Okay, so now I will give you an introduction to oil painting techniques and then lead you to, through the piece. So next, I'm going to talk to you about the tools of oil painting. Yes, because the basic of the paint is oil, right? So, um... To get to know oil painting, we need to get to know its tools and materials. I'm sure that you have some knowledge of oil painting before, and oil painting is quite different from Chinese painting. Does anyone know Chinese painting? By the way, if you're interested, you can go to listen to my Chinese painting, okay, to get to know something about Chinese painting. 
there are actually, married, uh, actually many different kinds of brushes for royal painting. Um, okay, we're, we're going, to, going to start from uh, brushes. There are different kinds of brushes for oil painting. Large, small, very small, and very large. We can classify them in terms of size into large, medium, and small. And they also come in a variety of shapes. Some brushes are flat-tipped, some are square-tipped, some are pointed, some are fan-shaped, some are thinner, and some are thicker. These are so many different kinds of brushes. And there are two types of hair used in oil painting brushes. There are bristle hairs from pigs and sable hair from the whistle, like, like uh, a whistle. So in the course of painting, you start with large areas. We always start, start with large areas when painting the oil painting. So bristle brushes are best in size of a half inch wide or larger, so are used to begin a painting. Whole paintings can be painted using only bristle brushes, but if you want finer detail in, uh, in smaller areas, you switch to sable brushes. Sable brushes are best in size on uh, one half inch in width or smaller. Sable brushes are your detailed brushes. Sable brushes made for um, is actually made for um, watercolors usually lack the spray needed for, sp um, for painting with oils. But as beginners, you don't need to prepare a lot of brushes. You just need to buy a whole set of oil painting brushes in which there are large and small brushes. Okay, as for the choice of harness and the pricing, you don't need to think about this. Um, because right now you cannot feel the difference between the tools. It doesn't matter if you don't receive your painting materials. The aim of this lesson is to give you an understanding of oil painting and oil painting tools. And for the difference between oil painting and Chinese painting, apart from the brushes, the surface painted are also different. Chinese painting are painted on rice paper. Do you know rice paper? Okay, while well, oil painting are used, uh, are usually uh, painted on canvas. And uh, I don't know if you know canvas or not. Canvas is a traditional surface for oil painting. Although oil can be used on most non-porous um, surfaces, the texture and flexibility of the stretched canvas is best. Many canvas surfaces are available including canvas texture paper, canvas glued to heavy board, um, primed canvas in a row, and pre-stretched canvases. And also canvases are available in different materials from linen to cotton linen. The roughness of the texture varies from canvas to canvas. So when we are painting something more delicate, we can choose some canvas with a smoother surface and when painting a rougher painting, we can choose some rougher fabric, for example, linen canvas. So why do we paint on canvas? Okay, I'm going to, another, uh, to give you another question. Why do we paint on canvas? You can think about it. You are mine. Okay, because oil paintings, unlike Chinese paintings, can be folded, framed, or mounted afterwards. We can frame the canvas directly after painting it, and there is a wooden frame under the canvas to hold it up. If we use ordinary paper to paint an oil painting, for example, if we uh, use the rice paper to paint the oil painting, what, are, uh, what will happen? Yes, I'm going to talk about it later. For the canvas, we know that um, for Asian people, they always need to prime the canvas. But for us, because we already have a, a, a prime on, on, the process, um, uh, on the process of production, so now we don't need to give it a prime before painting now. Okay, so again, why shouldn't us uh, use, uh, use rice paper or ordinary paper to paint oil painting? 
actually the paper will easily break with the oil paint okay if you we use canvas to paint on oil painting it will last for hundreds of years canvas is very resilient and with the development of the technology mass production has led to some relatively inexpensive materials for oil painting being very good so and now because of the mass um, production we also produce those um, uh, oil painting canvas already have the prime on it so now we don't need to give it the prime before painting but if you got um, the canvas uh, without the prime then you need to give it a prime okay it depends so what is the next the most important thing for oil painting so what's the most important thing for oil painting oil paints right of course why is oil painting called oil painting it is difficult because its pigments are mixed with oil so again why is oil painting called oil painting its pigments are mixed with oil right it's not the same as watercolor it's color powder mixed with oil to form this kind of paste so it is oil based its basic is oil rather than water based it needs to be diluted with this kind of mixing oil which is called medium so um and also what do i do if i want to make the paint thinner we know that when we use the water when we're painting the watercolor when we want this paint thinner we need we should add some water in this paint right but when we draw the oil painting what should we do if we want to make the paint thinner again we need to add oil right and this is and this oil is called thinner oil paints are mixed with oils actually i've told you later in this course i will explain how each oil has different properties and how to use these oils how to mix them so for the introductory stage many students have asked are there any tools that can be used instead because i think using oil paints is too complicated and for the beginners i think it's very hard for me to control these colors and to control the um, uh, the amount of the oil and also the paint or the proportion of the oil and the paint how to mix them how to um, dilute them okay now i will give you a set of tools for the introductory stage if you want to learn oil painting you should start with acrylic paint instead of oil paint because acrylic paint can be mixed directly with water and the brushes can be washed with water directly after painting and it's way cheaper than oils and actually oil paints are not expensive right besides the effect of uh, uh, the effect of acrylic is very similar to oil painting so if you have any oil paint or acrylic paint at home you can use them to paint the beautiful picture with me I believe you all have the basic understanding of oil pa painting tools by now. Next, I will ask you a question to give you something to think about after class. As I mentioned earlier, oil painting is blended by oil, right? So let me ask you a question. Okay, listen. Can we use our cooking oil for oil painting? See? Can we use our cooking oil or frying oil for oil painting okay this is my question clear am i clear can we use our cooking oil or free frying oil for oil painting remember this i will ask you this question in class tomorrow that's a thinking question i leave it to you you can think about it after the class okay so um you can see that this is the oil paint and also the acrylic paint so at the beginners uh you can use the acrylic paints because the paints are easily controlled okay so i'm going to switch the screen and i uh, told you that we're going to draw um oil painting together right 
Yes, no, we call the cooking oil or frying oil uh, for the oil painting. You've got the correct answer. Um, but think about this. Why? Think about why we can't use cooking oil or frying oil um, for oil painting. You can think about this after class and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you the correct answer of this question. Okay, you can think about it after class. And I'm going to review the correct answer in next lesson. Okay, as I have promised to you, I'm going. We're going to draw an oil painting together today. Um, do you know this mountain? Very, very famous mountain in Japan, right? Very beautiful mountain and very beautiful sakuras. I really love this picture. So this is the first picture I chose. I've chosen for you for this very uh, for this introductory class of oil painting. So what are you going to prepare? I have listed the materials here from up to down. You can see the acrylic paints. At the beginners, I'm going to teach you how to use the acrylic paints now. And after later in our advanced course, I'm going to teach you how to use the oil paints. Okay, so don't worry and uh, please use acrylic paints in this uh, se session because it's easily controlled for you as beginners and also the brushes the large brushes medium brushes and small brushes and also the pad and knife and then I believe there's a little bit um, cover this is the canvas 8 by 10 inches uh, actually in China we can buy the canvas of uh, 20 by 30 uh, centimeters like this but um, I have set the canvas on Amazon which um, I can get at this 8 by 10 inches so I've shown this size on the PowerPoint okay so next I'm going to switch the screen and start painting this marvelous picture with you have you prepared for your, the oil painting have you prepared your tools and materials of all your painting now okay if you don't have a palette knife i'm going to teach you how to make a substitution okay you can find an id card id card or just a card to um substitute substitute the palette knife it's okay just find something very sim uh, similar to the similar to the palette knife okay so i'm going to switch the screen and you are going to paint with me okay now you can see my canvas right um actually there are um, a lot of colors and images on this painting so i'll actually show you how to complete this painting step by step so please follow me here so can you see my screen if you can see my screen if you can see my canvas you can tell me in the chat box okay we're about to start our painting and i'm going to paint on this canvas i'm going to paint on this oil painting canvas and you can see my canvas is made up of linen. You can see very, um, very clear textures on it. And if you don't have a canvas, you can use a watercolor card, or watercolor paper. And also you can find any paper to draw this very beautiful painting. Okay, so um, actually we have different type of brushes of the different size and different colors. So as for today, you don't need to have a very deep understanding of, that, uh, of these brushes. And actually there are different types and different properties of these brushes I'm going to tell you in the later classes. So now uh, as for this is the first uh, classes of our oil painting i'm going to tell you how to use the oil painting tools and how to mix the colors and how to complete this very beautiful painting you can see on my screen okay then let's
get started. And everyone, you don't need to worry about um, that you won't know how to make the colors. I'm going to show you here on the screen on my palette. And you can see my palette on your screen, I believe. So, and if you don't have a palette, you can use a fruit, a fruit bowl or you can use any dishes, any ceramic bags or plastic bags to, um, to uh, mix your color. Okay, so first you can do it very simply as I'm, do I, I'm doing to sketch, to drafting, to do the drafting of this whole paper. So you can draw the boundary between the sea and sky, but don't divide um, this whole canvas into two parts very evenly. Okay, so don't um, don't divide these two parts very evenly, and uh, you can put your C line there in the one quarter place. You can sketch like me the sea level, the coastal line, and the mountain. You can locate these two images here, and then you can take out a masking tape like this if you have. You, you've got one and if you don't have a masking tape it doesn't matter you can use a ruler to draw a very straight line like this that's the very and that the C level very straight C level here so if you don't have a masking tape you can take out a ruler or you can just draw by your hand a very straight transverse line a um, very straight line okay that's the sea level that the coastal line in our painting. And as for the go of the composition, uh, this part is called composition or the drafting. The go of the composition is to, um, to ensure that we're not going to make mistakes in the size of the images. Uh, and later on, we're going to cover all these sketches with our paint. Then we are going to start, we are about to start from the first layer. And of course, we're going to draw the sky first, right? So what we're going to use for the sky. That is, you can, you can see the, see the, see the screen now. I'm going to focus a little bit. Uh, actually, it's called uh, Petalon Blue, a relatively dark blue actually I don't know if I pronounced it right because it's a kind of academic word for me you can just use a very dark a relatively dark blue for the color of the sky and as for the mountain and the sea we're going to use different kinds of blue but if you have the uh, if you don't have another blue, it's okay. I'm going to teach you how to get another kind of blue with the limited colors. And also, what are, you go are we going to use? Tit uh, titanium white, right? We're going to add a little bit of bright in the blue to form the transition of the colors. Okay, so as a, um, at the beginning of the painting, we're going to um, put the colors we're going to use on our palette. So now we are going to mix the color. Actually, as for the sky, um, white is the main color of the sky and also the blue. And today we're going to use white paint in sky, uh, sea, snow, and also the clouds. Okay, so after we have mixed our color, we can apply it on our canvas. So uh, what's the step of the painting? We can use a relatively large brush here. And it is called filter. You know, fil 
uh, it's called a few birds. I'm going to introduce its names to you afterwards. So we can mix the color on our palette. After the colors are mixed on the palette, we should apply them in their approximate location on the canvas. You can see the brush is then dragged back and forth in a crosshatch uh, stroke. Okay, we drag the brush back and forth in crosshatch strokes on the sky. We paint it from the top of the blue sky as if we were painting a wall. So we can see the, the sky is relatively dark. The color of the sky is relatively dark on the upper position and the color of the sky is relatively light in the lower position. Then um, how to get a relatively dark color very different from Chinese painting or in oil painting we need to add blue paints to the color to make this color darker right because um, for the color of the sky is blue and if we want um, want to lighten the color we need to add white paint to the color and don't be too light please mind that don't be too light actually uh, i'm going to introduce an action it is called blend namely to kneading something to mix the colors just like kneading dough a blend is the gradual transition from one color to another Oil paint or acrylic paints because it times to, it takes time to draw dry allows you to move the wet paint around on the canvas. This makes it easy to do the thing most difficult to do with other types of paint, the blend. That is to mean we can mix the color directly on the canvas. And you can see when we painting when painting this guy. This is called this and this is the very first layer of this painting, right? And this is called end painting. The painting of a very large space, a very large area. So the lower is that it goes down, we can add more white paint into our painting. Okay, can you follow me now? If you can follow me, please tell me in the chat box. And if you can't follow me, you want, want me to slow, slow, slow down a little bit, it's okay. Please feel free to tell me in the chat box. Okay, so the lower it goes, the lighter the color will be. If you consider your... Um, the paint on your brush is too thick to to be dragged back and forth on the canvas. You can dip your brush in, uh, in a little bit into the water to make the stroke smooth. Okay, I'm going to slow down a little bit. I'm going to add more details on um, on this sky. You can take your time to draw this sky from the upper position to the lower position. If you consider my explanation unclear, you can tell you can also tell me in the chat box to let me to explain explain it more, okay? You can ask what do you mean by blah blah blah, okay? So the brush is then dragged back and forth in a cross sketch stroke between two values into a satisfactory transition is made like this parallel strokes are then used to refine the transition of values again we drag the brush back and forth in cross head strokes and if you consider the paint on your brush is relatively thick you can dip your brush a little bit into the water.
actually you do not necessarily to draw them mm. exactly like me but to draw them in the way I teach you if I ask you to paint with me this stroke and that stroke telling you that you have to paint it exactly as I did you will end up painting pretty much the same as I did but in essence you have not mastered the method of oil painting and if you want to paint by yourself in the future you will not know how to do it so what do I want to teach you the most fund fundamental method Yes, we will go into finish the sky after the paint is dry. Yes, okay. Actually, 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 there's very big difference between the oil painting and Chinese painting. If you are interested in Chinese painting, you can go to our teaching assistant asked for the link for our Chinese painting. Okay, so as for the difference of oil painting and Chinese painting is um, the lightening of the color. As for the oil painting, as you can see that we add white paint to our paint to lighten the color. But in Chinese painting, we always add water in our um, in our lightening of the color. Uh, and actually, I picked up a sponge. Do you know sponge? I might pronounce it right. I don't know if I pronounce that. But I picked out a sponge on the side of the road today. I was like, um, this sponge feels nice. I will use it in class today. So I've show you how to paint it. Um, and I'm going to show you how paint how to paint clouds with a sponge later. Oh, uh, as for the question um, that do the sketch after the sky is dry, we're not going to do the sketch on the uh, on the sky, but we uh, we're going to draw directly on the sky, draw the clouds directly on the sky. Okay, so. Um, that's oil painting. In most cases, there are no specific tools and no specific brushwork. Oil painting is all about the result, not about the process. You don't know what the picture will look like until you paint it to the end. And in the end, you will be amazed by your own work. So, you, we can use any tools to create and get the shape and effect we want. Okay, as for the, uh, for the sky, are you down with this part? Are you down with the sky? Are you down with the sky? Yes, I believe that most of you have done with the sky. Right? Give me some response so that we can proceed with the next part. Five minutes, please. It's too long. Five minutes. Okay, you can take your time or you can add details after the class because um, actually to draw a sky is relatively a simple part for this. Okay, it is called under paint. Maybe you are late for the class. <laughs> okay. 
please feel free to add more details on your sky and to complete it after class maybe. Okay, we're going to continue with the next part that is the snowy mountain, the Mount Fuji, right? As we have positioned before and we are going to color it on. So in this part, we're going to use the blue um, we have used in painting the skies. We can mix a little bit of the light blue we have used before in paint, painting the sky and then put this color on the position of the mountain. And actually color mixing and color matching are very important in both Chinese painting and oil painting. As for the landscape painting, the color mixing is um, extremely important. And in figure painting, modeling and um, creating form are of the most uh, are of the most importance. Okay, we can apply this kind of blue on the snowy mountain. You can just put the color here very casually. And uh, in order to enrich the color on our painting, we can add a little bit of other darker blue or black. Right. And if you uh, if the paint on your brush is too too thick to be dragged for back and forth like this, you can add a little bit of water into your paint so that you are going to paint it very smoothly. Okay, we can use the carbon black here. We can use a black here and add a little bit into our We can add a little bit of the black here and then add a little bit of the dark blue and to paint our, our canvas to add more layers to the snowy mountain. When we're painting, we can imagine the real picture, the real, um, real scenery, the real scene of this picture. Then we can find that this mountain has different sides. It has sides facing the light and also it has the dark side without facing the light. So, um, the color is darker on this side. And also it is because you can see that there are many trees, plants at the foot of the mountain, at the foot of this side of the mountain. So the color of this part is darker. These are like the shadows of the plants.
we can also use our, our brush to drag back and forth between these two kind of blue, this dark blue and light blue, to also form this very gradual transition of these two colors, a different shade of blue. Add more layers to this mountain by using this relatively darker blue and also the textures on the mountain. Okay, I'll wait for you, uh, you a moment. We can leave the tip of the mountain there. We can leave the peak on the top of the mountain here. So we are going to apply the white on it. Okay, have you done with this part, the mountain, the color mixing? Or do you have any question in painting the sky or the mountain? And you can tell me, you can tell me where you are stuck. Okay, so which process is taking your time? Okay, are you done with this part? If yes, you can tell me in the chat box so that we can proceed with the next step. step. Okay, as for the next step, we're going to draw the body part of the um, body part of uh, and this is the body of the mountain. As for the body of the mountain. Yes, it is a beginner class. It is a beginner class. Am I going too fast? Okay, not yet. I'm going to wait for a mo for you a moment. You can feel free to add more details to your mountains. Okay, not not yet. I'm going to wait for a moment. Am I clear about the process of painting the sky and painting the mountain? Okay, you can take your time to draw this um, body part of the mountain and the sky. Do you know now how to form the gradual transition of the different colors and do you know how to draw the skies and mountains? Because I need to make sure that you, were, uh, you know how to draw the sky because it's a uh, very um, useful techniques usually used in our oil painting. And it's very, it is indeed extremely important. Okay, and if you don't draw the skies or mountains just like I did, it's okay. Just in this class, our goal, goal is to teach you how to use the brush and to familiarize you with the brushes. Now we can use the same brush to draw the sky and the mountain because the strokes are quite alike. Because we are uh, using the relatively large brush to um, color on this relatively big great areas. Okay, and now then,
Okay, now we are going to proceed with the next part, and we are going to draw the body part of the mountain. And on um, as for the texture of the mountain, we are going to use two colors again: the white and the blue. We can add a little bit of the blue, dark blue, and the white. We can mix these two colors together, and to have a very lot bl light blue. And then, okay, in this part, we're going to use palette knife here to form a very special stroke on the canvas. Okay, then we can apply these colors here like this using our palette knife. If you don't have a palette knife, it's okay. You can feel free to use a card um, or a piece of paper. Just go to form this kind of strokes on the mountain. These are the textures of the mountain. Use the palette knife to apply the light blue to the body of the mountain, just like putting. Can you do putting? Putting from the textures on the snow mountain here. Use our palette knife. We can use a little bit white and blue. Mix a little bit of the white and blue, and then we're going to get a light blue. And then apply this color with your palette knife on the body of the mountain. Okay, in this part, we mix the two colors together to go to get the light blue and apply the black blue uh, and to apply the light blue on the body part of the mountain. And you can do as I did. I use a fan brush here to adjust this a little bit to make this strokes more natural to blend these two colors to make the textures more natural, to make the texture on the body part of the mountain more natural. Are you done with this part? After this, I'm going to introduce the brushes to you. And so that someone has a, um, the, some questions about the brushes and I'm going to familiarize you with the brushes. Okay, you can feel free to add some dark blue on your body part of the mountain to add a more different shade of blue on this painting to make this color transition more natural. We can sweep here a little bit on the body part of the mountain to use this dark blue, different shade of the blue. Again, you don't need to draw them exactly as I did. You just need to 
use your uh, use your brush and follow the rule I have taught you. Okay, I'm going to introduce, you can take your way to add more details to your mountains and I'm going to introduce to you the different type of brushes. The most common shape brushes come in are flats, filbers and fun shape brushes and numbers of brushes vary widely between brands. So when you buy the brushes, look at the size of the brush instead of its number. Also, okay, now this is called filbert. You can see a filbert look like a flat with a corner around it. The stroke is oval shaped or hair circular. They are used when you want a softer edge or for smaller blends that you get with a flat, which is a type of Flat is also a type of oil painting brush I will, you, will also show you later. Okay, I'm going to find, some, uh, find a flat to you. And this is called flat. You can see a flat brush has hairs arranged in a rectangular shape that is longer than its wide. From the side, it is narrow. The flat is the most versatile of brushes. You can make a broad stroke, a narrow stroke, and with a little twist, a triangular stroke. This is also your primary blending brush. Then there are some two different type of brushes. The first one is the fan-shaped brush. Fan-shaped brush is the brush with its hair split. So it is also uh, used in some small dots. This is a fun brush. If I want to paint lush leaves, I can use this brush. Um, it has very loose bristles and it dots with more variation in, um, in shape. And this is round. Although some people successfully use round for their entire painting, they are less versatile than other brush shapes because little variation in the size and the shape of the stroke is possible. And rounds are most often civil hair and are used for small details and line works. Because um, we have um, such small rounds, so as for these small rounds, we can use it for the line work. We can use it as line, line drawing. Okay, so that's all for the introduction of the brushes, and then we are going to the trees. Okay, so are you clear about this, and are you done with the succeeding part of this painting? If yes, you can tell me in the chat box. And if not yet, you can take your time. Okay, if you have done with this part, please tell me in the chat box to, so that I'm going to be assured to proceed with the next part. Okay, um, I really want to make sure that every one of you is following me. Okay, as for the trees, okay, yes, I'm glad that you are following me. As for the trees, we're going to use two colors. Yeah, the first is black. And uh, make, we mix the black and the dark blue we, are, uh, we were using in the last step to draw the first layer of the trees. We're going to draw a lot of layer for the trees. We dot, oh, in this part we're using a fun shaped brush. You can see 
we're using the flange brush and I'm going to show you how to use this. You can see dot, press and drag to sweep a little bit. Dot and press with your brush horizontally to form the overall shape of the small trees at the foot of the mountain. We are going to use a lot of steps, several steps to draw these trees. And this is the first step, always called modeling. This is the overall shape of the plant at the foot of the mountain. Yes, we are using the black. We mix a little bit of the black and the dark uh, blue. As clear as mud. Okay, if you think I'm not clear, you can tell me in the chat box. You can make me make me to explain it. Okay. So next, after the dotting and pressing with your brushes vertically to paint the tip of the tree, you can tear the masking tape off. We're going to wait for the trees to dry. Okay. So we can tear the masking tape off and then I'm going to teach you how to wash your brushes. Um, actually, uh, you can use 10 brushes to complete this painting. You can also do what I did. I used three brushes today, one large, one medium and one small. When I put a small basin of water next to them and I fill it with water, when washing the brushes, we should dip them all in the basin, but take out a piece of paper or cloth and wipe the paint off the brush. You all have a piece of cloth, right? We use the cloth or paper to wipe the excess paint off the brushes and then we dip the brushes in water to wash them. In this way, we can get our brushes very clean and the water won't be stained very much. It's quite convenient. Okay, are you done with the part of the plant at the foot of the mountain? Okay, you can feel free to add more details to the to this um, plant at the foot of the mountain and we are going to go back to our snow mountain here, Mount Fuji. And in this step, we're going to draw the snow on the top of the mountain. And in this step, of course, we're going to use white paint and also the pattern knife. If you have any experience of puttying, you're going to draw this part better than me. Okay, and we know that the paint on the top of the mountain should be thicker, should be the thickest in this whole painting. So we're going to paint this white, uh, we're going to apply this white paint onto the canvas from up to down. Yes, we can use our pattern knife like this to apply it down, to use our pattern knife in this manner from up to down. And we know that on the top of the mountain, the snow should be the thickest. The snow should be thickest on the 
top of the mountain and it becomes deeper. So, so that we can see the body of the mountain under the snow, right? So we can make the paint deeper when going down. But at the top of the mountain, we should put a very thick layer of paint there, a very thick layer of white paint. Up to down. And in the lower parts of the snow, we can add a little bit of blue. We can go very slowly like this to apply this white paint on our canvas from up to down. So you can see that palette knife is re really useful in oil painting. We can use it to form, to create such textures, very obvious textures. From up to down. The lower it goes, the thinner the paint. We can use different sides of this palette knife to draw different um, kind of strokes, right? Is we can add a little bit of the light blue in our paint in our paints. Okay, do anyone here had the experience of partying? I'm very curious about this. And I really want to know what do you do? <laughs> What's your job? Partying, paint the wall, maybe it is called, and uh, that is to me, P-U-T-T-Y, partying. Um, I thought that is to me, to paint the wall of the house. Okay, that's all for the top of the mountain, the snow on the top of the mountain. The thick 
to the thin. The thicker place to the thinner place. Are you done with this part? I think we are finished with this snowy mountain, this very famous Mount Fuji. Okay, after we have, we're done with the snowy mountain, we can clean our palette knife. Okay, we're going to proceed with the next step, and we're going to stick it to the other side of the line. We know, um, we have teared off the masking tape, yes, and again, we're going to use the same uh, masking tape to stick it to the other side of the line. That is, please before before stick it to the other side of the line, please make sure that um, the paint on this side is dry now. Okay, don't press too hard, just uh, put it there. Okay, and then we're going to paint a uh, color the C. Okay, so uh, as for the C, we're going to use a very different different blue, ultramarine. You can choose a relatively light blue. We can change a little bit of the blue when we draw the different objects. And I know that some of you don't have other blue. If you don't have other blue, you can add a little bit of the red your blue and you are going to get a violet blue. So if you don't, I'm going to show you how to mix the color, how to get another blue. If you don't have other blue, if you just um, have one blue, you can add a little bit of the red paint in it because we're uh, we're going to get when we add a little bit of red in the paint in the blue paint the blue is getting darker we can have a light blue and then we can add to the paint a little bit of light blue. So again, how do we get a light blue? We can add, uh, we can mix the blue with a little bit of white. Then we start from the bottom of this C and we go upwards. We apply this very light blue from the bottom of our canvas. From the edge of our canvas, we go from we go from the bottom of this whole painting and extend upwards, and the color becomes darker and darker, thicker and thicker. So, um, as for the color of this, oh, the color is becoming lighter and lighter from down to up. But from up to down, the color is becoming darker and darker. Right, so again, how do we uh, lightening and how do we um, thicken the color? We can add a little bit of the red into the paint to make it lighter and we can add a little bit of the um, blue to make it darker or we can add a little bit of the red to make this color darker. And also why do we add a little bit of the you can make your make the C pinkish color. Make this pinkish 
color and apply it on our C. And this pinkish color, you can imagine that as um, the flexion of the Sakura. And then the upper it goes, the, the lighter the color it should be. Again, we use the same methods as we've uh, done for the sky drawing. We drag our brush back and forth. And then how to lighten the color, we need to add white paint into our paint. Right, again, we drag back and forth. Horizontally. To make this color transition more natural. Actually, in my college, I um, I start painting oil painting from the tracing. And I need to find the techniques and regulations by myself. And it really takes time to gain those enlightenment, to gain those um, like rules and techniques and also regulations. Actually, I need a teacher to provide with me the guidance. But actually, I have a lot of lessons. I have a lot of courses to attend. So I don't have time to talk to my teacher personally. So when learn when learning the oil painting, we really need the students to provide with us the guidance, the provide with us the correct guidance. Just like how to change, we need to change the color when you turn to the water from the snowy mountain. When we turn to the different subject, you are going to use the different shades of the color, and uh, how to. Uh, get a different type, different shade of the blue. Just like I told you, how you need to add a little bit of red to the blue, and you are going to get a darker blue, right? So you are actually it takes you like one or two years to think about it by yourself. So um, we're going to wet it to dry and we have all down with the C. Okay, so now we're going, have you, are you down with this part? Are you down with this part? The C. We use three colors, red, blue, and white. These two, uh, these three colors. Okay, are you done with this part? Okay, we're going to... We're going to move on to the next part. Okay, in the next part, we're going to proceed with the clouds on the sky. So I've told you that I'm going to use this kind of sponge here. I've not, uh, I've tried a little bit before the class, so I think it will be very useful when we paint the um, clouds on the sky. You can see uh, when we draw the sky and also the sea, Okay, we apply the clouds on the canvas like this. We can dot and press using this sponge. Dot on the canvas and then sustain this color on the edge. You can see me. Whip a little bit on the edge of the color.
yes, you can see that when we color the sky and also the um, the sky, the sea, and the mountains, we use this color to show the different layers of these objects or these kind of subjects. You don't need to understand the proportion of these colors today. You just need to focus on the tools and the use of them in this lesson. Tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, I will teach you something about color, but I will teach you all of them during these five days. Okay, so don't worry about that. Mm, but I don't want to talk too much in this first lesson or you will be able to digest it. Um, you're not going to be able to digest it because there is too much information in this class. I've talked about the tools, the tools of oil paints and also the acrylic paint and also the different types of brushes. I think it's time, it takes time to finish, to digest those information. So I will only give you some simple color mixing techniques today. Okay, don't worry, just press salt and press on the sky very naturally. And the sweep on the canvas round and round to draw these clouds to form a very um, to create create very natural clouds on the sky No, we are painting together today. Why are you not? You can't follow me now? Am I too fast? Am I go too fast? Do I need to sl slow down again a little bit? Okay, actually, um, this is um, indeed a little bit difficult for the beginners um, it's a little bit complex but today the goal is for you to be familiar with the tools and you can use any tools to draw this painting and also you can use a brush to draw this painting uh, use the brush to form this kind of strokes you can use your rounds the brush the round brush to round brush to form this kind of strokes. You are so far behind. You can tell me where you are. Where you are, I'm going to give you some help. Okay, uh, if you don't have any idea about the process of painting, you can go to our teaching assistant to ask a little bit. But more convenient, you can just ask me in the chat box. I'm going to answer your question if I saw them. Okay, so please feel free to ask me anything about the painting. If you have any question about this, I'm going to answer you here. Okay, very quickly. Yes, you have never used oils before. And uh, have you prepared acrylic paints for this class? I think it's 
um, easy for the beginners. And after the class, you can practice a little bit. Okay, it's a, maybe a little bit difficult for the beginners. Before you dip your brush into, I'm going to emphasize a point that before you dip your brush into the uh, acrylic paint at the very beginning of this class, you need to um, you need to dip your brush into the water and wipe away the most of water, most of the water on your brush, and then you can dip your brush into the oil paint or the acrylic paint. And that your strokes you're going to make are going to be smoother. Okay, are you done with this part? I believe that some of you have done with this part. Okay, I'm going to proceed with the next part. And before this, I'm going to tear off the masking tape on my painting. Okay, then I'm going to proceed with the next part, that is the textures on the C surface. And in this part, I'm going to apply the white paint with my palette knife. If you don't have a palette knife, if you don't have the tools, you can use any other substitution, as I've mentioned before that the most important thing is the result, not the process. You can use any tools to create the shape you want. Okay, so now in this step, we're going to use a palette knife or a card or a piece of paper, a very uh, hard paper to apply the white, uh, white paint onto the canvas, onto the position of the C surface. Okay, we use this palette knife horizontally uh, using the very thin side here. You can see, we use this palette knife like this, use the very thin side of this palette to apply the white paint on our canvas. So if you don't have a palette knife, it's okay. You can feel free to use an RD card or credit card to finish this. Just to use the very thin side of this card. And uh, you can apply this white paint onto the canvas very casually. Just in mind that do not draw slanted lines or it will be a mess. Okay, we just draw some straight and the horizontal, uh, horizontal uh, lines. This is an advantage of oil painting. And actually, um, the reason that we don't use a Chinese painting, we can't use Chinese painting in oil paintings because that Chinese painting can't cover each other, right? But the oil painting can cover each other. And if you have made any mistakes in painting, you can just wipe it off with a piece of cloth or paper. If the paint has already dry and you can uh, use another color to cover it on, and then it's all down. So that, that's one of the virtue of the oil painting. For example, if you consider the color or the shape of your mountain is not uh, appropriate, you can use the color of the sky to cover to cover it on, and you can draw a new mountain here. So using this method, you can adjust your mountain or somewhere you don't satisfy with a little bit, with the paint, with very thick layer of paint. So in this part again, we use this and also, if you don't have a palette knife, you can use also use a um, line drawing brush here to draw this textures. And also, 
except for the white textures, we also have some blue textures on the sea surface, right? So we use our color knife to apply some of this blue onto the sea surface, like what we did for the white textures on the sea surface. You can use a relatively light blue and also the dark blue. I recommend the dark blue for you to add more layers to the sea surface. You can see the, uh, although we are using white and blue only, but the layers and the color on our painting is very rich. And after that, we are going to go to the second layer of the plot at the foot of the mountain. Okay, before that, I'm going to ask you, are you down with the texture on the sea surface? If not, you can take your time. If, if yes, you can tell me in the chat box so that we're going to proceed with the next step. Okay, hello, give me some response. Are you done with this part? Okay, if you want, you can add a little bit of the details. Okay, are you done with this part? No? Okay, take your time. Do you have a palette knife? Yes, somebody say yes and somebody say no. Do you have a palette knife? If you have a palette knife, you can use your palette knife. If you don't have a palette knife, just take out a card to, form, to create this kind of strokes, to create this effect. Okay, we're going to proceed the next step, the second layer of the plants at the foot of the mountain. Yes, you can go to our teaching assistant to ask her for the link and watch it again, to watch this video again. And in the next time you can, um, slow down a little bit of our video, okay? Uh, I understand, I really understand, and this is the, your first time of painting or painting, and this painting is actually a little bit um, difficult for you. Okay, don't worry, we're going to learn more about this, and we're going to familiar with um, these techniques. Yes, here we can add a long line, a thick line for the plants of this, uh, of the plants at the foot of the tree. You can feel free to add your details. You can add this line and you can also take your tries to not add this line. Okay, so just uh, to adjust your painting to meet your aspiration. Okay, then we're going to add the second layer of the plant at the foot of the mountain. And in this step, we're going to use green. And a little bit of a very bright green like this and also the lemon, lemon yellow. Lemon yellow, you can see. We can add a little bit of the green and a little bit of lemon yellow and we're going to get a very bright green. And then we are using a fan brush this step and to apply this color onto the plant at the foot of the tree, uh, at the foot of the mountain. 
We can draw some press to form the、uh, leaves of the tree according to the natural regulation, the rules of nature. Um, actually, I really don't um um、uh, know in which process you or in which step you are not um following with me. But uh, if you um actually you can give me some suggestions of my a、uh, lesson, and、uh, you can tell me how can I adjust a little bit of my lesson? How can I slow down? And、uh, you are going to follow me. What I'm, what can I do to make you following me? Okay. And what can I can I do for you? Okay. As for the fun brush, we are going to form the strokes like this, and the dot and press it on the tip of the tree. Oil painting brushes are made with longer handles than watercolor brushes or house painting brushes, right? <clears throat> Have you used、uh, watercolor brushes or house painting brushes? <clears throat> Excuse me, and、uh, I believe that you've seen them, right? These other brushes are ideally used in a vertical position with the painting surface horizontal. Liquid goes downhill, so the short handles shift the balance toward the front of the brush, so the paint will flow better. Oil painting brushes are used in a horizontal position with the painting surface vertical. And the oil paints doesn't flow. When you hold your oil painting brush horizontally, the long handle serves to balance the brush in your hand. After the colors are mixed on the palette, we should apply them in their approximate location on the canvas using the brush. Okay, surely I can give you the guidance of what you need to buy for the starting of the painting, and I、um, actually I have give provide with、uh, those at the very beginning of the class. And after this painting, after、um, this painting, I'm going to show you again what you are、uh, you need to prepare for the oil painting. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. I'm going to tell you what. What you need in oil painting again? Okay, so that's the second layer of the pond at the foot of the mountain, and then I okay, I know. Um, it's okay. I'm going to explain it again later to address those tools to you. And then, as for the third layer of the trees, we can use a brighter. Green. How to get a brighter green? We can add the yellow lemon again to the green we used before. If we want to get a darker green, we can add darker green into the paint. If we want to get a lighter green, we can add more yellow, a、uh, lemon yellow into the paint.
Okay, um, if you don't clear about the um, cloud, I'm going to show you again how to draw the clouds. Okay, so we use this kind of uh, sponge here. We can uh, fold this um, piece of sponge like this and then we dip it into a little bit of the white and then to mix a little bit and then to paint we first dot and press it on this canvas and then we can blend this color with the sky yes we can blend this on the sky And then we go round and round to sweep here, to sweep the edge of the paint to make a very natural gradation of between the color of the clouds and the sky. I can't wait to see it. And in this, uh, this stop, okay, you can see the different color. We can blend these two colors and we can sweep and go with our hands round and round to form this very gradation of clouds and very natural effect of clouds. Okay, so as for the cloud, we um, the paint on the top of the cloud should be relatively thicker and on the lower position of this cloud should be relatively thinner. You can see here. So we can we should put thicker layer on the top of or on the upper position of uh, the cloud and relatively thinner. Uh, paint at the lower position of the cloud. Okay, so from up to down, the layer of the uh, paint should be thinner and thinner. See, are you clear about this cloud? Okay, so next. Oh, actually, I need. Oh, I want to tell you that. Um, in the plant, as for the plants at the um, foot of the mountain, I was using sap grain. Okay, I really want to see your painting after the class. Okay, that's the end of um, maybe the end of the plants at the foot of the mountain. And if you want to add more layers, on this, you can dot a little bit of the very bright green and the lighter green. Just remember that the upper it goes, the upper the layer, the brighter the color. Okay, then. You can add the layers to your aspiration. Okay, that's the end. That's the end of um, the plants at the foot of the mountain. And then we're going to the branches of the sakura. So in this part, the color we are going to use is dark brown. So in this part, we use the black and red. We put a little bit of red into the black.
So we mix these two colors to apply them on the canvas to form the uh, branches of the sakura. So in this part, we are going to use line drawing brush, very thin brush to draw these relatively thin branches. Like this, we can apply these colors here. You can draw these branches very random, uh, randomly because later on we're going to cover them with sakuras. The petal of sakura. So actually, what are the tips for drawing a branch? First, we use uh, the letter Y to draw the branch. So the branch look a, a little bit like the letter Y letter Y, X, Y, Z. Yes, it's very simple. Once there is a shading relationship that is the spatial relationship between the different branches, we need to leave the Y space at the joint. You can see. If I draw it directly here like this without leaving blanks, your painting will be a mess. This is the shape of the letter Y and the little branches are here. Then if we go on further up and draw from the bottom, for example, I need to keep extending and expanding here. Now I like to make extension here. Yes, from top down. Now I like to make extension over there. The twig is like the letter Y of small size. Please know that when drawing the branches, we should always make sure that the shape of the branches should always follow the letter Y. Also, the branches should be long in the lower position and, the short, and short in the upper, and also staggered with each other. Besides, please always leave a blank at the intersection of two branches. That's the rules for drawing the branches. You don't need to draw the branches of branches of the flowers exactly as I did, but follow the follow the rules I give to you. Okay, are you done with this step? Are you done with the branches here? In the next step, we are going to draw the petals of Sakura or Oriental Cherry, that is to call it. Oriental Cherry, the petals of Oriental Cherry or the petals of Sakura. Okay, no, uh, if no, you can take your time. And um, Sakura is from Japan, right? But um, Oriental Cherry are from the East. No, okay, you, you can take your time to draw the branches. So please follow the rules of draw the, um, draw the branches. When drawing the branches, we should always make sure that the shape of the branches should always follow the letter Y. Also, the branches should be long in the lower position and short in the upper, and also staggered with each other. That is to mean that the so small branches of the main branches should, be, should not be connected in the same point okay so that is to mean that they should be stag staggered with each other besides please always leave a blank at the intersection of two branches